Now on to the main error that I promised you we're going to look at that you'll see for pronoun pronouns on the SAT, and that's pronoun agreement. So again, pronouns must agree with their antecedents, particularly in singular or plural. So if you've got a singular noun that's replacing, you've got to use a, a singular pronoun. If you've got a plural noun, you've got to use a plural pronoun, and so on. So let's just look at some examples. A student might want to determine their major before starting college. So whenever you see pronouns in a sentence, be immediately skeptical of them. Now, not that they're always wrong, but often they will be. So there, this is plural. What is the antecedent? Well, who is ha who has the major here, right? This is a possessive pronoun. Well, it's the student, right? It's the student might want to determine, well, not their major, because the student here is singular. So if you had to fix this, how would you fix this? And this is a very important thing we're to go over right here, because this is a very weird thing the SAT does. So if we have a singular pronoun and we're not sure whether the student is male or female, or in this case, if we're talking about the general student, so the general student could be male or female. We don't really know, right? Could be both. So in that case, we don't want to use there. We use instead on the SAT, his or her. Very important. Now, in real life, this is one of the places where spoken English today differs a bit from the SAT's position on the language. We would probably say there here, and no one would bat an eye. Uh, a student might want to determine their major. Most people would say that. Most people would not really disagree. Maybe some grammarians would be upset about it, but frankly, you know, who cares, right? Uh, because English doesn't have a good gender neutral singular pronoun. We could say a student might want to determine his major, but you know, that's like 1940s style writing. We don't assume every uh, student's going to be male, nor do we just assume that his is the kind of gender neutral pronoun that stands in for either males or females. So because English doesn't have this uh, a good gender neutral pro pronoun, we've got two choices, either his or her, which is awkward and wordy to say, or there. The SAT considers his or her to be correct in the situation. That's the important thing to remember. People who want to do well on the SAT must dedicate his or her time appropriately. So here again, his or her is singular. What is the noun it's referring to? What is, or who is the person or people who have the time? Well, it's people, right? People generally, which is plural. So hold on, actually here, we want there. Because that's the plural pronoun. It goes with the plural antecedent. The town is well known for its hospitality. They always try to make visitors feel welcome. Be very careful. Notice, originally we're fine. The town is known for its hospitality. It's a singular. The town, a collective noun, as we talked about before, is also singular. No problem. In the second part of the sentence, though, we use they. So especially with they, it, them, this, uh, and th those, or these, be very careful with those words. Make sure they're referring to something specific in the sentence, number one, and number two, that they agree. Well, they is referring back to the town, right? It's the town that always tries to make visitors feel welcome. So actually, as you might expect, this is the wrong pronoun. It should be it, because again, it's a collective noun. It should be singular, so this should be singular. And if we change that, incidentally, this would become tries because it's a subject verb agreement error then, but that's besides the point. Every student should bring their books to class. Again, main issue here is the there. Every student, like we talked about in a previous video, every is our um, indefinite pronoun and it's singular. Even though it's referring to a group of students, like multiple students, it's singular in English, which means this must be singular. So it should be his or her. And again, we would probably say every student should bring their books to class and have no problem with it in real life. But the SAT is not real life, so we got to learn their rules. Each of the great theories of physics are known for their complexity. So careful, great theories of physics is indeed plural, but it comes after a preposition. So remember, stuff in prepositions generally is not going to be the subject of verbs and almost always not going to be the antecedent. The antecedent here is each, which remember is singular. So first off, it should be each of the great theories is known, subject verb agreement, and it should be for its complexity. If you want to learn SAT grammar efficiently and effectively, one must learn what is actually tested. So this I just stuck in here. This is an example of pronoun consistency. And it's almost like a kind of agreement error where you've got to make sure your pronouns agree with each other. So notice we start off with you. If you want to learn SAT grammar efficiently and effectively, then suddenly we switch to the indefinite pronoun one. And why did this switch come about? And on the SAT, as in real life, we would not want to be inconsistent with our pronouns in this way. So either we can change one to you, or we can change you to one. We just got to make sure they're both the same. We've got you, you, or one, one. 
Those who stand up for their political beliefs do it from a sense of patriotism, not sedition. So let's see, those here, those is a demonstrative pronoun, doesn't have to refer to anything, so those as written here is fine, because it's referring to those people who do this kind of thing. Who, relative pronoun, so this, who do stand up for their political beliefs is referring back to the, the those, it's just telling us more about those kind of people, right? Those people who stand up for their political beliefs. There, that's plural, refers back to those, which is also plural, no problem. It, remember, whenever you see it, be skeptical. So here, what's the, the question is, what is it referring to? Well, you might say, well, oh, well, it's referring to standing up for political beliefs, but wait a minute. The sentence doesn't have the noun standing up for their political beliefs, right? Here, it's just, a, it's part of this clause. You would have to literally have the noun standing up for their political beliefs in the sentence, and you don't have that here. So this is what I mentioned before about context. We know from context what the it's referring to. That's not the issue. On the SAT, this is wrong because it's not referring to anything specific in the sentence itself as a noun, a noun in the sentence itself. So we could change this to so. Uh, those who stand up for the political beliefs do so from a sense of patriotism. I mean, there's other ways to rewrite the sentence, but the point is we just cannot use it here. Final sentence. Martha became famous for her novel High Tides, a book that plucked herself from obscurity and made her famous. Okay, be careful. Became famous for her novel. Okay, referring back to Martha, no problem. A book that plucked herself. So wait a minute. Herself is our reflexive, right? It, you use it when someone is doing something to themselves. Here, though, it's the book that did something. It's the book that plucked herself. Wait a minute. No, we can't use herself here. We got to use just the object, her, right? A book that plucked her from obscurity and made her famous. Notice we didn't say made herself famous there, right? So we would use her here. Here's an example of where the reflexive pronoun is used incorrectly. Okay, so there's a lot more examples of this in the SAT tactic series for grammar. So go ahead and check that out if you wanna see some real questions about where these might come into play.